Designed, directed, and produced by Shigeru Miyamoto, Super Mario is the best-selling video game franchise of all time. Fuck knows why, the guy has all the personality you'd expect from a mustached hobbit with a tendency to devour strange-looking mushrooms, and it's not like the story ever changes. So, if you've played one Super Mario game, you've pretty much played them all, but this is the one that started it all, so for those who have somehow avoided ever picking up a Mario game, the story is as follows. A giant satanic turtle monster named Bowser has kidnapped Princess Peach, who was known as Princess Toadstool in the American release. The police force must be really shit in this universe, because the only one to come to her rescue is a fat plumber named Mario. It's never actually specified what plumbers do in this world, so I'm guessing either Mario called in sick from work that day, or saving princesses is just part of the job description. Either way, Mario is a lot fitter than he looks. He can run really fast, jump really high, and swim like a fucking shark. Just don't fall into any shallow pools, they're his one weakness. He also can't take any damage, which is his other one weakness, but when he eats a mushroom he gets an extra hit as well as growing to roughly the size of a bear. He can also pick up these fire flowers, which make him lose his speed, but allow him to shoot fireballs. Not only that, but stars turn him into an unstoppable badass, annihilating Goombas, Koopa Troopers, and other minions just by touching them. There are also these pipes that either warp you to hidden rooms, or take you to a different world. Each world contains a castle, which you get inside by pulling down its flag. The higher up the pole you land, the more points you'll get. I shan't go into too much detail about the castles themselves, but expect this to happen a lot. Mario hasn't really changed all that much since 1985, well, 1987 if you live in the EU or Australia, but anyway, rather than make the stupid argument I made about Pokemon, I'll try and be a bit more fair to Super Mario Bros. It holds up better than a lot of games from that era, thus earning it a solid 73. I'm not an avid Mario fan, let me just get that out there now. I don't consider Super Mario Bros. or any of the games in that series to be my idea of an afternoon well spent. I like the aesthetics of Mario's world, and I really get a kick out of the music, but sometimes I think it's good to move on. Never forget the good times, but when a franchise starts milking it to ridiculous proportions, I'm looking at you, Star Wars, it's best to take a step back, lest one get cowpox. If you haven't played it, then I would recommend you do so at least once, but as I said, the formula doesn't change much, so if you've already played one of its many sequels, then don't worry. It's actually a sort of sequel to a game called Mario Brothers, which really pales in comparison. I don't know if I'll play this specific game again, but I certainly won't be able to avoid playing something that resembles it. The series has enough games, and will most likely continue to make them until gaming is replaced by something that doesn't require use of one's hands, or indeed, one's brain. That was meant to be a Back to the Future 2 reference, perhaps I should use some clips. Anyway, Mario isn't the only culprit. I've already criticised the Saturn's Creed, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Halo for this, and I don't doubt I'll criticise some more franchises for it in the near future. Right, that's it for this review. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. What, you want me to do the... Ugh, fine. Mario, Mario, Mario is a very, very good game. Even though I'm a plumber, you'll give me shrooms, and I think they might be magic shrooms. Is it the norm to save a princess just by jumping on somebody's head? It would be heaven for a square, yeah, that's Mario. Yahoo!